Let's start now. Greetings, sports fans. Welcome back to Edivision, the channel where we look at sports differently. I'm joined today by the Formula Sports. Big YouTube, but you guys go over there and check out the Formula Sports. Formula, what's up? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm great to the boss. I wake up this morning, uh, so I'm in a good yeah. mood. Um, big right. YouTuber. I don't know about that. You know. Big YouTuber. <laughs> I don't know about that one there, but <laughs> cool, me take it. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, man. Um, we got about 10 or so hours to di digest the game last night. Jamaica won, Mexico won at the office. Some would say a good result, others would say two points dropped. Um, I'm with the good result camp. What say you? How was the game for you? Oh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say two points dropped. Because in all fairness, we have to admit that the Mexican team was a, a better team. Or certainly, yeah. in my opinion, it was a better team than ours. I think it was a game of two halves from the reggae boys. Even though we scored in the first half, I think we were poor in the first half, to be honest with you. But we did step our game up in the second half. And for the most part, managed to match the Mexicans in the second half, for the most part. Yeah, man. And you mentioned the first half, we, you know, from the first whistle, one minute in, we almost conceded. So it was a tough, tough first half for us. Luckily, we got, we scored on our first, first opportunity in the fourth minute by Leon Bailey. Brilliant cross by Shamar Bowes and Nicholson, formula. Pinpoint accuracy. And a bullet header from Leon Bailey. What a goal. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, Boza stepped his game up in this particular game. A, a much improved performance to his first game against Suriname. And, you know, I, do, I, I mean, there's still room for improvement where Boza is concerned, but he, he did better than, we, we, you know, his last outing. So, and, and Bailey, Bailey also performed better this time around than the last time, which is kind of understandable given the, all the circumstances. The circumstances. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's, that's probably... I think if memory serves right, I saw Leon score a headed goal in the Europa League. I don't remember. I think I was watching a game with him versus a team in Israel or something like that for Bayer Leverkusen, if memory serves me right. Mm -hmm. And so, headed goals is not something that he, he does no, on a regular rare. basis. It's very yeah, rare. Collector's item. It was a good blindsided run because he mm -hmm. actually. Made, made the run from behind the centre back and went in between true, both centre backs true. and you know it was a bullet header man bullet header power mm -hmm. I mean to be fair there was a lot of pace on the cross so he just basically guided it into the into the net but it was a, a very good header yeah uh, unfortunately we're unable to hold on to the lead going into the halftime break Romo getting a header of his own um, Lambert um, Paul. You know, late fall there at the end. You know, it was always, you know, a problem to, you know, consider a late goal right on the brink of half time. But, you know, I don't think we can blame anybody for that goal. It was a well-placed ball in the box and Roma rose high, higher than Damien Lowe and put it in the back of the net. I mean, some people said that the marking could have been better and, and many people would have said that the foul from, from Lambert, if memory serves me right, was a careless foul. Very I mean, curious. yeah, if, 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 if memory serves me right, the play that is running through my mind with Lambert, I, I don't know what he was thinking. I mean, the player had already gone by him and he was behind the player when he made the tackle. And there's no way he could have been making an attempt on the ball. <laughs> God, I mean, the ball was long gone at that point, right? And he, he made the tackle in the player's back. So mm -hmm. I, I I don't know, man. To me, Un unnecessary. Um, and he was far away from goal with with cover. Players exactly. were back. So yeah, I I thought Lambert was the worst player on the park in the first half, man. Honestly, he was all over the place, man. Yeah, but overall, what are your thoughts? We are now qualified to the Gold Cup, leading the league, the the table still, and five points. No no qualified. Thoughts on I mean, that. Mm -hmm. No, that's good. That's good. I mean, this was going to be a tricky little group. You know, the good thing about it is that Suriname did not 
they don't have all their big guns either for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a, a positive for us. And uh, as I say, it was always going to be a tricky group when we saw the, the, you know, the group when it initially yeah, was made public. And, you know, many of us would have been, I wouldn't say concerned, but we knew that we were going up against a very good Mexican team. Mexico is always going to feel a good team. And I personally was of the opinion that, you know, Suriname is a team that should not be taken lightly. So it's good to see that it has, under the circumstances and with the personnel that we have had at our disposal, it has gone relatively well, but still room for improvement for sure. You know, um, not all the performances have been upbeat about, but at the end of the day, for the most part, we're getting the job done and we have not lost as well. So that's also another positive we have not lost in the, the, the Nations League thus far. Yeah, man, and definitely we've seen performances improve under Paul Hall. We're looking better. We're trying to, to build a new identity, as Damon Lowe said in an interview. We're looking to build a new identity. We're looking to gel, build, get more chemistry. And we're kind of seeing that playing out in these games. Um, it's good to see, see us have back-to-back -back games to play, you know, for the, the players to get to know each other. And, you know, especially a settled team. Not a lot of chop and change, a more settled team. And, you know, it looks good going forward. There's going to be chop and change to come, though, you know, because, I mean, surely this cannot be the best squad yeah. that a reggae boy Yeah, because assemble. we're looking at the, the Antonias coming in of this world. Who else will, will be coming in? Maybe I mean, a, a roof will be coming in. So it's, it's not the full strength, but one and two places definitely need improvement. The right Pino, back, right, exactly. Pino, Pino at centre back. We, we need some pivot players, though. Eddie, we need yeah. some pivot players. We need a backup to Ravel, right? Because if Ravel, let me tell you something right now. If Ravel does not play for us, it makes the game a lot more difficult for us, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right? When we even if I mean look, it's gonna be difficult for us to find a player that can do what he does at the quality that he does. But is if it's even a similar type of player who at the very least is not too far off. Mm -hmm. You know, we need, we need some depth where that is concerned. And for the love of God, man, we need for Sato a CDM issue, man. CDM. This, <laughs> this flipping CDM issue, it has got mad my virgin. Big and serious. It has drive me crazy. We need, we need three. Right now, we now have no CDM virgin. We need three yeah, proper true. CDMs in like, yeah, when we yeah, say yeah. proper, I mean, players that can do the job at a certain level for us. Anthony Grant, we cannot rely on him going forward. A player that I have a lot of time for. But, you know, he's over the hill. And he's yes. on the opposite way going not in the right direction. We can't, mm -hmm. we can't build with him for the future. He's what now, like 35? See? Yeah. So we, we have to bring him. We have to, I don't know where we're going to get them from. I mean, Kevin Stewart is another irritated case. The brother you can't keep injured. Yeah, man, injury prone. So we can't really look at him as well. Honestly, I don't think we should, a lot of people are relying on Kevin Stewart as the as the, the Lord and Savior, so to speak, at the CDM position. I humbly suggest we 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 do not put our eggs in that basket going forward because I don't think Stuart is going to be a big player for us going forward either because I don't think he'll be available. Most of the times he's not going to be available. True, this, player, true. this player is on a hospital bed more than he's on a, a, a training pitch or a football <laughs> pitch. It's crazy, man. Crazy. But when we need to sort out the CDM position CDM. urgently, a proper ball-playing CDM who can do the job at a credible level. All right, family. Um, let us just look at some of the stats. Um, we, we, because we need stats to kind of back up what we're saying. Yeah. So in terms of shots, Jamaica, eight shots. Mexico, 18. So we, we saw the, how dominant the Mexicans were in that yeah. category. Three shots on target for Jamaica, seven for Mexico. 
So six big saves for Andre Blake. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some will say man of the match. Excellent saves. Yeah. In terms of possession, the Mexicans dominated that 63% compared to 37 for the Jamaicans. But I think this 37, it didn't feel like a 37% because I believe we have a lot of the ball. So it kind of felt a little bit higher. What do you think? In the first half, we had very little of the ball. But in the second half, and, and our position stats improved in because if memory serves right at the end of the first half, we were low 30s. So because we had much more of the ball in the second half, it kind of brought it up to high 30s. But it, mm. it, it looks fair. It looks fair. Yeah. In terms of passes, obviously the Mexicans would dominate there, 525 compared to 313 for Jamaica. Uh, pass accuracy, 74% for the Jamaicans, 85% for the Mexicans. Fouls, mm. pretty much even, 18, Mexico, 14 for Jamaica. Three yellow cards, one yellow card. I think the referee, though, should have given the Mexicans some more yellow cards. I saw instances where Leon Bale was just shoved to the ground, you know, you know pulled back and no yellow card. Uh, Paul yeah. and the coaching staff were very upset about yeah. those cards. Well, there were moments when we should we could have got a red card, too. Because <laughs> if memory serves right, Bell made a tackle. And yeah. he was already on a yellow. And yeah, that's true. If it was another referee, it would have mm. been good night. Yeah, so no yellow. So two offsides, one, one for Mexico, two for Jamaica. Four corners to six. So pretty even there. Mm -hmm. But let's quickly get into the player ratings formula. Mm -hmm. I'll give you the... The lead to start off with Andre Blake. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Exceptional. Big, this, I think this for ever since we start YouTube, this is probably the first time. The first time. I've given a 10 out of 10. You can't, what, what negative you have to say about that particular performance, right? Excellent. 10 out of, and his distribution, especially when we started to go long because we wanted to get the team further up the pitch. It, it it his distribution wasn't too bad either. It was it was relatively good. Yeah, I was just so good about to say that even with his feet, you know, just to play out some of the balls. Cause we did that a lot, you know, play out from the back and we, we did it pretty well. Yeah. To ten beat, to, to, to beat the press, to beat the Mexican press. Some some real looked, quality saves Eddie. Ten out of ten. 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 Especially the ones in the first half. Uh, that point yeah. blank save there. Andre wow. Blake, Andre Blake reminded fans last night why he is our undisputed number yeah, one. And, and we do not only that, but many people have been calling for either Dylan Barnes to get a proper There's run. There's no way, no way. Or to try and see if we can scout and recruit a replacement for Blake. Blake reminded us last night. Mm -hmm. In some fans seem to have forgotten about Andre Blake. Them yeah, I, I remember. I remember. I made the back-to-back -back penalty saves in the World Cup qualifiers, exactly. the latter stages. So he, yep. he's tremendous. Yeah. Um, Javin Brown. I didn't have a good game. His passing, his passing in the game was horrible. Um, unforced errors. You know, without a lot of pressure, his passing was terrible. Um. Attack wise, I didn't see much on him going forward. I have to give Javin Brown a four, you know. Not one of his best, better games. Um, you know, persons might want to keep him low. I don't know how much you want to give him, but I'll give him a four. I think from an offensive standpoint, he was poor. From a defensive standpoint, he was okay. I would give him a five and a half. Five and a half. All right. A five and a half. Um, Jamai Topi picks up a yellow card. Zero, zero, no. zero. No, Pamela, no. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You never that. No. <laughs> I, I go first. Um, he was well, well protected by Damon, though. Apart from that challenge that, that got him a yellow card, I really didn't see much, much errors, you know, being created by, by Jamai. He passed the ball well. He looked comfortable. It's not his first time playing at this level. Um, yes, he's slow. <laughs> um, but it's not something we can change. 
we can't change his speed. But I think playing against a team like Mexico, you know, it, it, it kind of helped him a bit. Um, I give him a six, you know, I give him a six. Not a bad game. Boy, Eddie, I, I respectfully disagree. First of all, in the first half, Topi was atrocious. Topi was all over the place. From a positional standpoint, mm -hmm. he was a wreck. Poor tracking, poor covering, poor everything. Poor is on the offensive side of things. His passing, he was always giving the ball away. His passing wasn't normally, his passing is his strong point of his particular game. Last night, he kept on turning over the ball with, with some errand passing, right? In the second half, his performance improved. To be fair, he looked more measured and more, you know, involved in the game and less ball watching, better covering, better tracking. You know, the passing never really improved as the game went along. But in the first half, he was so poor. I give him a... I'll be kind to him. I'll give him a four. And that's very kind. Well, if, it's if, if it's just I, off of his first half performance, Eddie, it would be mm -hmm. a zero. He was all over the place, man. All over the place. Uh, there's a big gap, four to six. I guess I have to watch him over. Watch over about his performance. <laughs> Uh, there's a big gap in that, and so, so must be wrong. But let's <laughs> let's go over to the number seventeen vice captain Damian Lowe. Um, we should be closer in terms of a rating. I think he had a yeah, good man. game, very good game. As I said before, covered a lot for Jamai Tuope. There was a few instances where the, the challenges were a bit rash, but that's Damian Lowe. <laughs> we, we expect that from him. He picked up a a yellow that could have been a red. So, but overall, is is commanding this player. Um, leadership qualities show that the back, especially you know, alongside Topi, um, had to be doing two jobs most of the time. You know, covering for Topi a lot. It was all over the place. You know, winning tackles, breaking up players, getting headers. Um, I'd give him a six point five. Ooh, Nana, six point five. No, Eddie, 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 yeah, yeah, him can't. I was going to give him a nine, but him can't get nine then because that was probably that and the tackle that could have been a red card. Mm -hmm. Those two, those two singular moments would bring down his score because that tackle could easily have been a red. Yeah, so I would give him a seven, seven and a half. I'll give him seven a seven and, and a half because to be fair, relative to the amount of pressure that he was under, I think he held up. Very, very well. It's just those yeah. two moments would have been a knock against him. Yeah, man. And I had said 6.5 heading to 7. So I think I'll give him a 7 then. Pretty much, you know, give and take. They can't see the goal. Don't know if it was entirely down to him. But we we'll move on to Amar Bell, left back. Also picked up a yellow card. I um, defensively wasn't bad. Was it was it too too bad? Um, I didn't see him a lot in the game. And um there was this one time when he, he ran back and almost gave up a penalty. I think it was shoulder to shoulder. No, that wasn't in the box, on the edge of the box. Shoulder the to shoulder. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So as I said, I didn't really see much. But I'll give him a six. I can't think of any good thing, great thing that he did or bad thing. So I'll give him a six. Yeah, I, I think that's spot on. I agree with you 100%. I'd give him a six. Um, He was more involved in the game in the second half. He was being used more as an outlet to build out from the back in the second half. So as a result of that, we saw him on the ball uh, quite a lot more than in the, the, the first half from my recollection. But And the, he had some, he had one, at, no, he had about, he had a couple of shaky moments in defence. And, and to be fair, it's kind of difficult to really 
especially with Jamai Topi. <laughs> <laughs> because I think he, but I think I think Jamai Topi put both Damian Lowe and Amari Bell under more pressure. Right? And and they had to do even more on the defensive side of things to provide coverage for, for, for Topi. But I, I think six is a fair is a fair assessment. He, he had some shaky moments in defense. And he wasn't the most prolific going forward either. But we saw him a bit more in the game in the second half than in the first. And he did relatively okay on the ball. So I'll give him a, a six as well. Kevin Lambert. Oh, God. Next. <laughs> if you want if you want, if I, you want to give him a grade. I, <laughs> I, 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 I give him a four. Oh uh, god. That four. That 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 four. I think I just think that foul on the brink of half time was just silly, unnecessary, and it cost us the goal and probably three points. You know? But you know, he's back in the team. He's definitely not the CDM that we want, but for now, he's the one that we have and he's he's trying. He's doing his best, <laughs> but you know we need much, much better from that. Position. Kevin, Kevin Lambert should be back out of the team, not back in the team, back out of the team. Like, yo, especially Eddie, in the first half, Lambert was poor. God, man, it was a disgrace all over the place. On both sides of the ball, all over the place. He couldn't make a five yard pass to save him life. Yeah. It was a dis honest yo, me tell people all the way. I don't have time for Lambert as a CDM in a national team. You could have make an argument to me for Lambert being able to add some amount of value as a center back to a national team. But as a CDM, yo, me see enough for Lambert for no some in a need for cinema. <laughs> Big and serious. Just like I will give him I will give him a, a three and a half. I give I would rate his second half five. To be fair, he improved. He, and I he, think he did went off. He did remember he went off to you know with an injury. Or maybe he was tired. He didn't play the night. Mm, yes, 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 yes. He, he he improved in the second half, to be fair to him. I'll be generous to him and give him a five for his second half performance. But his first half performance was just so poor. Honestly, mm. yo, me that game a negative. <laughs> 100, just how poor he was, man. All over the place, yo. I'll give him a, a three and a half. I'll be generous to Three and a half. What about Speedy Williams? Speedy did as well as he could, given what he was working with in the pivot. I, th I think that... Lambert made his job so much more difficult and, and even put Speedy in some very precarious and unfortunate situations. So I think relatively, I think under the circumstances, he did relatively well. I would mm -hmm. give him a six and a half. Um, I agree with the explanation, but not the score. I'll give him a six. But I can remember in the 59 minute, because I wrote it down, he made a, a tremendous tackle in the box against Jimenez. Yes. Remember yes, that? Jimenez, yes, if, if, yes. If Jimenez had, had turned with that ball in a, a sure goal, in a, despite the form that Andre Blake was in. Yeah. That was a yeah. tremendous goal saving tackle. I didn't even remember that. Thanks for reminding me. You're right. Yeah, man, so You're right. That, that, that was the best tackle of the game for me. Because to me, that was a sure goal. Sure goal. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Fox. So, so big up Speedy and, and that getting back and doing his defensive duties. So I give him a six. Um, we know Speedy is safe already. Safe pass is nothing too risky. <laughs> back with your pass, you know, keep, keep the ball moving. We like that sometimes. So we never lose the ball as much, but, you know, so big up Speedy. Um, take it from the left now. Jonah Flemings, the man from Toulouse. Flemo was not as involved in the game as I would have liked. Um, to be yeah, I think out of all the front four, 
he performed the least out of all the, the, the front four. I would give Flemo. I would give Flemo. A, you know what? I'll give him a six. I'll give him a six. I don't know. You agree with that 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 assessment of Flemo? Um, after in the first half, we didn't see much, but I think late in the game, we kind of saw him more from a central position, driving, especially when Aaron's came on. He, yeah, he did a yeah. lot of, of work in terms of the counter attacking play, he was very involved in that. But that was, as I said, late in the second half. But you're right, he was, he was moved into central midfield and Aaron's right. out and left. Yeah, right. So we saw a little bit more push from him in the second half, but you, you know. Analysis is good. It, out of the top four, it was the least um, involved. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, the number 10, Ravel Morrison. Yo, Ravel Morrison is a wonderful player, man. A wonderful player. It's just a pity that I think it was very difficult for him to be as involved and as impactful in the game as he possibly could. But whenever he got on it and whenever the team got him involved. Trouble. Trouble. Yo, a special player, man. I honestly think I could make an argument for last night's game being Ravel's best ever game in a reggae boys jersey. Even though he was not as involved as other games. Yeah. But what he did when he was involved, he made... The, 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 he made the job of all the players around him so much more easier. Yeah, I, ca I can't even find the words to describe he, how good Ravel was last night, man. And everything he did came off. Every single everything. thing. The touches, everything. the flicks, the dummies, everything. The passing. He, he's a player that you know has been growing and growing in this national team. Uh, remember the days when Ravel could play 20 minutes good. Remember those days on the tapper? His fitness. Yeah. Yeah. You no, know, you know, playing regular football with Dar Derby County, you know, is paying off now. We're seeing the best arrival now. Getting back to his old farm. And, you know, we go, it's good to see him doing this for the Jamaica Reggae Boys. So, I knew how much, how much I give him? Well. I give him a I give him an eight and a half. I give it, you know what? On second time, remember, take that back. I'll give him a nine. I'll give him a solid nine. The only reason why he's not a ten is that he didn't get on the ball as much as I would have liked. If he had gotten on the ball as much as he did against Suriname, mm. I would give him a 10. Because he was just so... Every time he touched the ball, it was just magic. They're going to see yeah, Russ, man. And I, he, give him, I give him a 8. Mm, I think that's unkind to the player. I remember his involvement on the first goal as well. Oh, yeah. He, was the, he assisted the assister. Yeah, exactly. I, I think he played the ball out right to, yeah, to um, Bowser. Yeah, yeah. But I think he is solid enough. Um, he didn't get an assist, he didn't oh, get a goal, but but he was very, very good. Um, he did a lot of his work deep in midfield. Not a lot of the good work was, you know, up front or uh, higher up in on the pitch. So I guess that's why I'm going to give him an eight. But he yeah. did well. He did well as usual. The goal scorer Liam Bailey, Bala. Leon did well as well. Relative, I don't. He's another one that could have been more involved, right? It would have been good to have seen him more involved. Um, I gave Ravel a nine. I'd give Bailey a solid eight. I think he did relatively well under the circumstances, and you know the goal as well. And we we need not forget that he nearly assisted Boza when he made that run. And played Boza in behind, and Boza had the chip, the chip effort. So he almost had two assists. Remember the the, the corner kick too. That yes, Boza yes, but hit the post. Yeah, the yeah. Bar. Mm. Yep. So I'll give him a eight. It was a it was a good solid performance from Leon Bailey under the circumstances, re relatively speaking. I, I will give him a little bit more. You know, as I said, under the circumstances. He came out to play a big game. Remember, this is a big game, you know. We're not playing against Suriname. This is a big game. Even though he's not the strongest Mexican team, he showed up in a big game, scored a goal, a big goal, played well throughout the game. You know, he ran at the Mexicans. He wasn't afraid of them, you know. Salad people and all of that. We, we like the, the tricks and so on. Um, so I give him a nine, you know. 
scored the vital goal. So we're moving up to Boza. I see your point. I see your point. Mm-hmm. Boza, check it, Boza. Boza. Boza get. Ooh, Boza get a seven and a half. No, you know what? Uh, no, man. I'll give him my eight. I'll be generous. Yeah, I'll man. give him my eight. Yeah, I'll yeah, give yeah. him my eight. I'll be generous. I'll give him my eight. I, ha- I had. I remember telling you why I was considering a lower score. Boza's touches, there were there were some plays, some important plays where his touches were not what they needed to be. And whether yeah. it's his first touch, his second touch, his third touch, you know, making a run at the defense and, you know, overrunning it, so to speak, ball getting away from him. So he needs to improve where that is concerned. Some some dangerous plays and his touches, a bad touch would have failed him in the moment. But, you know, given the fact that he hit the bar off the, 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 the corner, given the fact that he almost scored with the, with the chipped or the lobbed effort, yeah, and yeah, his, yeah. his work rate and his hold-up play was much better than the last time around. His movement as well was much better than the last time around. Definitely. I will give Boza a solid eight as well. But his, his touches need to improve a bit. And even in the first half, in the even in the second half rather, when we're playing out from the goalkeeper kick out some play, he won a lot of those first balls as well. And sure, got sure. us going in attacking transition and helped us to keep the ball up the pitch by winning those first balls and, and playing off of off of you know him being the target man. So I'll, I'll give Boza a solid eight. A solid eight. Yeah, man. I agree totally, 100% with everything that you said. Um, much, much different game from the last game. He was more involved. You know, Suriname, I believe, he struggled. Couldn't control the ball. Ball has kept bouncing off him. Um, was weak in, in a lot of those challenges. Um, Abin and those guys, Apps, dominated um, Nicholas in that game. But this game... And you could see at the end, you know, he, he was lying down on the ground. He was tired, beat, put in a lot of work, and then off the ball. You know, tremendous display. You know, could have easily gotten two goals. Was unlucky. Um, good performance. You can't really fault him. So I agree with the eight. Um, we made one substitution in the second half. Kevin Lambert went off for Rolando Aarons. Thoughts on Aarons? I believe, I can go first. I believe he was very lively. Coming off the bench. Um, was a part of a lot of counter attacks at the end. Um, you know, running past players, something different. We don't have that type of player in the team. If you look at it, he had something totally different. We don't have that runner with the ball. And he's, 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 um, he's beating players, he's not losing the ball. So he adds a little bit, diff- a little bit of dynamic in that middle of the park. He was placed in the middle. Um, for his quick, quick cameo, I can't give him too high enough because the time wasn't, you know. But I give him a, a six. He played what? Probably 10 minutes? Like, like a ten, ten yeah, minutes. yeah, he above came average. out of the 81st minute. Yeah, above average. It wasn't average. I give him about six, seven for his quick cameo. I have been dying to see other left-footed wingers being brought into the national team. Right, for, for quite a while, the only one of real quality we had was Leon Bailey. Um, this is a player that we have been calling for for many a years to you know be given a chance in the national setup, and he has finally arrived. I think he was a very good outlet down the left for the reggae boys in this particular game. Yeah, very good outlet. Um, as you say, running at 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 Mexican defenders, getting the beating of them, helping us are playing a tremendous role in helping us to break lines and also helping us to play the game further up the pitch by having the ball for a longer period of time in the Mexican half and you know getting very advanced in the the the, the Mexican half. So with that being said. As I said, the, the, the short amount of time would be the issue. But he, he had such a good impact. I'd give him a I'd give him a six and a half. It's the only issue is that you know he didn't have a lot of time. By the way, Paula 
Palal, Palal want some beat, man. What, I want substitute, and, substitute. One and sub, one. Really? One. Jaja. Anyways, the, the one sub was a great sub, and he, he had a great impact. All right. Six um, and a half. Yeah, man, reasonable. Um, we, we're looking at the table here. We still have one game to play against Mexico away, while Mexico will play Suriname away and Jamaica at home. Um, you think we can tap the group, Pamela? If we get a positive result in Mexico, and by that I mean a draw, if we can hold the Mexicans to a draw in Mexico, which I mm. do think is possible. possible, if we, we you know, I, I think we can do that. So, yeah, I think, I think we can. I think we can tap but, the group. But would that be enough? Remember, Mexico will play Suriname and most likely beat Suriname and go to seven points. All right, so if we draw so we'll with Mexico, if we draw we'll with Mexico, win. if we draw with Mexico next, we'd be on six points and they'd be on five. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. I remember they have Suriname. Yeah. So we definitely have to beat them to top the group. A back, a most back, likely. A back Suriname getting a, a good result against Mexico uh, in oh. Suriname. Surprise, surprise. I think they can. I think they can. I think they can. I think I watched the Suriname-Mexico game, and I think, to be fair, I think Suriname did better than what the scoreline suggested. Yeah, yeah. I, re I, don't think, I don't think Mexico were three goals better than them, but, you know, some real schoolboy errors could have cost the Suriname is greatly. So I think Suriname could, in Suriname, they, they could get a result. They could. I don't put it past them, to be honest. Yeah. And again, I want to congratulate the boys. You know, we are now qualified for the for the Gold Cup. So, round of applause. You know, it's small wins. We're getting there. Could have been worse when we were joined John in this group. You know, person, you know, we're saying Suriname, up and coming, Mexico, we might not get out. But look, look at us now. We're now qualified formula. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. so Pamela, tell the people where they can find you. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, at the for, at the Formula Sports on Instagram and the Formula Sports YouTube channel. So that's where you can you can find me. And and right. Eddie, thanks for having me on, man. Pleasure as always, man. Uh, no problem, man. You know, I always go to chop it up with you, man. So, so guys. As I said, go over there, check out Formula and those platforms. You know, one link. Also, like and subscribe to this channel. You know, especially if you're new, hit that subscription button. Turn on the notification so you don't miss a, a next video. And, you know, big up.